Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with John Herlocker of Tignus. We're going to talk today about advanced process control. This is part of an ongoing series about AI in semiconductor manufacturing. John, in the last section we looked at virtual metrology and how that can be automated and how that can be used. What comes next? How does this actually come together for the people that are making chips? Yeah, so I think, you know, one of, obviously with a lot of the um, current technology trends, we need increasing precision in our manufacturing processes. So, you know, that's process control, that's elimination of process variability. Uh, so we talked about virtual metrology in our last session about how that can, you know, it can maybe improve the quality of your sampling, right, which can improve process quality, might allow you to reduce some, have a smaller number of metrology tools. Uh, but I think another super interesting place that we're seeing virtual metrology have a big impact is in advanced process control. So, you know, uh, so let's talk a bit about classic APC, uh, and then we'll talk about machine learning based APC, and then we'll talk about intelligent process control. Um, but so down here, I have a picture showing you sort of, you know, classic APC, right? And so you've got a wafer going into a process tool, um, process happens, and as we talked about in the previous session, variability also happens, right? So the outcome is not always exactly what you want. These tools drift in particular. And um, and so, you know, after that wafer exits, it goes to a metrology tool where you look at the outcome, the CD, the thickness or whatever. And then if you see that your outcome is drifting, right? So your critical dimension is drifting from where you want it to be or your, your variable, variability or thickness is changing in a bad way, then you can sort of, have a feedback, right? So this is sometimes called a feedback controller, right? Hey, I'm gonna feed back this, hey, this is how far off the CD has gotten into an advanced process controller, which in turn will sort of, in essence, turn the dials on the process tool, maybe increase the gas flows, increase the deposition time, right? There's a bunch of knobs that can be fiddled to kind of adjust for changes in the equipment, uh, et cetera. And so this is a classic APC controller, well proven, been deployed for years. This sort of adjusts as you go along, right? Because there's a certain point where you say, okay, this variability that is starting to creep in here from drift is basically is, is caused by maybe some buildup of some waste or the process needs to be adjusted entirely uh, over time. Here's this is a way of optimizing it. But it allows you to continue getting maximum benefit, a financial benefit out of this too, right? That's totally the case, right? Like normally you'd have to, you know, take the tool down and clean the chamber in the example you gave. That's really expensive. That's downtime, right? You'd rather keep it up and running. And so advanced process control is this idea that you can sort of change the inputs to the tool, the controls, to achieve the same outcome, even though perhaps the equipment state is changing. Absolutely. But and this is all done auto automatically? Yeah, so in a, well, I mean, you could have a human in the place where it's making recommendations to a human, but really, you know, most customers are gonna deploy this eventually in full closed loop mode, right? Because otherwise you've got a human that you're relying on to twiddle dials, which introduces human error possibilities, and plus you've just gotta pay someone to sit there doing sort of mind numbing work. So you're still using the physical metrology, but at the same time, you're basically optimizing it as you go, right? That's right. So that's classic APC, right? Classic advanced process control. And most, most, uh, you know, it, 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 this is relatively well deployed on the most critical bottleneck tools and most sort of high volume places, right? Um, but where now the the leaders are now at today or the or movie you know the the most advanced folks are now largely at this area which we call machine learning process control and here we're going to tie it back to that concept of virtual metrology so you know in a summary machine learning APC is really APC with the inclusion of virtual metrology, right? So if, you know, here we have, you know, process, wait for, wait for goes into a process, there's a, you know, it happens, it goes to a tool, there's this time lag, right? It doesn't immediately go into the, into the metrology, it, at some point later it goes into, and while you're waiting for that to happen, a lot of things are changing, and maybe you're scrapping a bunch of wafers, right? You know, if drift has happened, it's going to be some amount of time before you respond to it, right? And so, you know, 
basically, if you had something that was sort of virtual metrology, I'll call this VM here, right? That virtual metrology, as soon as that process run has happened, the sensor data can go to the virtual metrology, which can predict what the metrology will be. And then based on that prediction can immediately correct the APC, perhaps even before the very next wafer goes into the chamber, right? So now think about the benefits there, right? Now drift happens, some amount of time passes, you, de you detect it, you feedback, you make the change, but all those wafers in the middle have been impacted. Here, you can immediately detect that there's been a change, immediately make that change, etc. So I think the, you know, this is, We'll call, we call this and sort of is called in the industry machine learning based APC, right? Where this is a machine learning model doing virtual metrology and it's giving you that improved level of, of, of process outcome because you can sort of capture that thing really fast, right? One of the problems that you identified in the previous video that we shot is that virtual metrology is not terribly accurate. So how does that apply here? Are you getting wrong results as you're starting to push this into uh, the automated, uh, we've now found problems, let's adjust the processes. All right, so, so, so to be accurate, it's not that virtual metrology is inaccurate, it's just that it's not perfect, right? And so virtual metrology can actually get quite good, right, in the predictive percent, so in the 80, 90 percent. I mean, imagine if you could predict the stock market correct 80 to 90 percent, you'd be an incredibly wealthy person, right? Uh, so virtual metrology can actually be good. It's just not perfect, right? And I guess my point in the previous session was that, you know, people have this expectation that needs to be perfect to replace. It's not perfect, but it is awesomely directional, right? So for this case, you don't need to be perfect. You just kind of need to know I'm off and kind of in what direction am I off, right? And then use that to feed into this model, which then kind of corrects the inputs to kind of, you know, it's kind of like having a pilot who says, oh wait, you know, the landing, I'm trying to land there, but the wind is kind of blowing me off a little bit. I'm gonna get back in line with the runway, right? That's basically what APC does. And so you don't have to have a, you don't know exactly perfectly how far away you are that runway, you just kind of have to get back closer to it. And then, you know, the next time around, you'll get another reading to see like, well, where am I? So it, it's, you don't need it to be perfect. And that's why there's been really good success deploying these virtual multi-reality models as part of a process control strategy. So what comes next? How else can this be improved? That's right. So, you know, this is really among most of the fabs in production today who are at the, the leading edge. This is really what you're seeing, this machine learning base, and, and it's, it's working well. Right, but there's really another step, right, which we I like to call intelligent process control. So if you look at here, you've you've introduced this new component, which is virtual metrology. But at the end of the day, you're still feeding it back into the same sort of uh, relatively naive process control model, right? It's not using machine learning or whatever to actually make a decision about how to change to control the tool, right? So I would say IP, intelligent process control. Yes, you still have this component, but now you're basically, you know, you're replacing this sort of old school APC model with an AI, with a machine learning powered engine that's that's actually trying to sort of emulate the physics of the system in some sense to figure out what the best strategy is. And, you know, the beauty of one of the superpowers of applying machine learning here is that machine learning is able to actually, well, first of all, it can model the process in a much more sophisticated way. Uh, so its decisions about how to manipulate the process are, are more informed. And so the, and the, the second thing that really the superpower of this is that, you know, IP, this intelligent process control using machine learning can actually optimize for multiple outcomes, right? So in the old day, all you, you know, initially with APC, all you really cared about is just keep the CD as centered as possible, right? But there might be a, there might be multiple critical dimensions you're trying. You know, there might be a critical dimension, but you might also want to minimize the runtime so that you use the least amount of, or or minimize the amount of gas used because it's toxic or whatever, right? But but traditional APC models are just focused on one variable they're trying to optimize for. Moving to machine learning allows you a much more sophisticated way of optimizing across multiple outcomes too, as well, which is a side benefit that's really great. And just to put this in perspective, there's, this is not the final step here because this still gets tested the way it's always been tested. It still has 
monitors in there that go out to the field that measure how it's per performing as it's, it's being uh, used in the real world. So this is just a way of improving the efficiency of your manufacturing, right? That's right. Uh, so, you know, obviously, you know, manufacturing is a very conservative industry, right? And they want, and, and often your customers are very concerned about quality and predictability. And so, yes, you've got a model that's making a decision about changes to be made, but there's all sorts of fail-safes around this, right? You know, it's not, it's given ranges of healthy ranges over which it's allowed to manipulate. It's told which parameters it's allowed to manipulate. And as you mentioned, it's extensively tested, right? And I think as we learned earlier, machine learning is about, you know, works, you know, it really needs, if you train in the region that you operate, you're going to get good results, right? You know, the beauty of manufacturing is you're doing the same thing over and over again. So it's relatively straightforward to test and validate that this will behave predictably. And in fact, you're going to get more, as at least as predictable results as you did without uh, APC. Thanks, John. Next segment of this discussion, we're going to take a look at generative AI and how it plays into this field. That's right. How could we not talk about generative AI and large language models and all that sort of alphabet soup? So uh, I'm excited to talk about how that's relevant to semiconductor manufacturing.